Hello and welcome my friends and viewers to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw pictures of monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, while giving a small bit of quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their origins within the game, how they're utilized in the modern edition, and how I like to utilize them in my own games. This video, we'll be taking a look at the goddess of life, wilderness, and the sea, Melora, the Wild Mother. Melora actually got a very late start in D&D, first appearing in 4th edition as a member of the Dawn War Pantheon, without much lore or history to her beyond her involvement in said conflict of the Dawn War. This combined with her stance as goddess of the oceans and the wild makes her particularly versatile in terms of betrayal for dungeon masters. Some opting to giving her a more calm, forgiving, motherly figure approach, hence the namesake, while others have her able to embody both the beautiful and dangerous aspects of nature. I personally subscribe to the former, as I already have the god Malar to embody the darker side of wilderness. Most of Melora's history, as I said before, has to do with the titular Dawn War, in which Melora fought alongside the other deities against the powerful, titan-like primordials. Interestingly enough, the aftermath of this conflict would cause the Minotaurs to hold a particularly strong disdain for her, as after the war had occurred, the goddess Arathis assumed guardianship over the Minotaur race from the demon lord Baphomet helping them to build a great civilization that would eventually become corrupted by Baphomet's loyal retainers. As such, Melora would come to destroy the city with a volcanic eruption before it grew too strong, earning her the enmity of both the Minotaurs and Arathis herself. Now while I can definitely see this as being a little bit out of character for her betrayal, I find this to actually be a very good in-lore explanation for the constant struggle between civilization and wilderness, with the former's constant need to expand and the slow destruction of the resources of the latter. It extends all the way to the battle of order and chaos. When it comes to my games, I see Melora as a nurturer, the tender of all nature, lover of all creatures, and unshaking defender of their place in the world. She isn't a warring goddess, and always tries to seek out the peaceful solution, yet she has formed alliances with other, less tolerant nature gods, who have no qualm about reminding civilization that nature simply allows them to exist. Physically, I've always seen Melora having dark skin from constantly being outdoors, bright yet deep red hair flowing in the wind with a dress formed of leaves and flowers of sorts. I also see her as a constant traveler, her presence allowing the part of the world that she is currently in to experience spring and summer while her departure spells the beginning for fall and winter. Thusly, I gave her a walking stick, coated in vines and overgrowth. Classes that I personally like to align with Melora are College of Creation Bards, Nature, Life, and Tempest Clerics, all manner of druids, rangers, and barbarians, four elements and sun soul monks, oath of the ancients and devotion paladins, scout rogues, storm and divine soul sorcerers, celestial and archfey warlocks, and wizards of the transmutation and conjuration schools. I can also stretch out to include the oath of the watchers paladin, and even necromancy wizards if you take the whole necrobotanist approach. In terms of magic items that I like to align with Melora, you can never go wrong with the boots and cloak of elvenkind, but I also like to include beads of refreshment and nourishment, boots of false tracks, elemental gems, the mask of the beast, and the cauldron of plenty. She also can be aligned with a massive amount of the game's staffs, like the staff of bird calls, flowers, the adder, the python, the gulthia staff, the staff of healing, the staff of swarming insect, the staff of the woodlands, and the staffs of fire, frost, and thunder and lightning. The last few I can include are the Trident of Fish Command, the Two Bird Sling, and the Pathfinder's Great Axe. Beyond that, any other items aligned with nature or the elements is fitting for her. I've also created a homebrew item for myself that I call the Oaken Shield, an obvious nod to the Lord of the Rings, and a powerful shield that conjures trees and branches to come to the defense of the wielder. The item stat block I've also included in the description. Often compared to other D&D gods like Shanti and Sylvanas, Melora stands as an eclectic deity whose wide domain of nature lends her to be present in a number of different adventures, environments, and stories. I like to think that the nature gods have sort of formed their own cadre, each to represent a different aspect of the wild, the wild mother sitting as the peacekeeper and tender of the world as a whole. But of course that may change as I explore the gods further. I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and if you want to keep updated on the next legend lore, please subscribe to the channel, press the little bell icon in the corner to be notified of the next video, and follow me on social media for progress of each art piece. Also comment down below about how you use Melora in your games, and which characters of yours follow her, and also please let me know what D&D characters you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.